In this video, we're going to talk about derivations and the all-important adjoint representation. So to start, we'll talk about something called an F-algebra. An F-algebra A is a vector space over field F equipped with the bilinear operation dot from A cross A into A. So this dot doesn't have to be associative or commutative, right? There's no ass assumption uh, on this. And so immediate examples that come to mind um, are 1, nv. So if a is equal to nv, we can define the dot of any two things to be the composition of linear maps, right? And so this is certainly bilinear. Another example is if a is a Lie algebra. So any Lie algebra has the bracket operation, and so if we just define the dot to be the bracket of those two things, well, Certainly, the bracket is bilinear, and so um, that works. And so, interestingly enough, right, if you consider A is equal to GL of V, um, then uh, A is both endowed with this times, this composition of linear maps, and it has a bracket. So it's kind of F algebra in two different senses. So don't don't confuse the two. I I remember I confused them when I was first doing it, and that's why. I, uh, I brought this up. And so uh, we're generally more interested in this case here. Right? We're going to consider what happens if your alpha algebra is actually also a Lie algebra. And so an important class of maps on F algebras are called derivations. And they're called derivations because they satisfy something called the product rule, um, which you should remember from calculus. And so this thing here is the product rule. And so a derivation delta of an F algebra A is a linear map delta from A into A satisfying delta of A dot B is equal to A dot delta of B plus delta of A dot B, where dot again is the operation that we endowed on our F algebra. We say dir A is the set of all derivations of A, and an important observation to make is that since dir A consists of only linear maps, um, if you use the subspace criterion, you see that zero is a derivation and it's closed under addition and scalar multiplication, uh, we actually see that all derivations, they form a subspace of endomorphisms of A. And um, furthermore, if we uh, use the bracket on GL of A, for dir A, it turns out that by the subalgebra criterion, that dir A is a subalgebra of GL of A. And so the way you check this, right, is that you say for all delta, kind of delta prime, in GL of, uh, or in dir A, you want to check that um, delta comma delta prime is an element of dir A. Right, and so this thing here is equal to delta composed of delta prime minus delta prime composed of delta. That's the bracket we endowed on GL of A. And so the way you check that this thing is a derivation, of course, um, is to just verify the product rule. So delta comma delta prime acting on a dot b is equal to, or should be equal to, we don't know, um, delta comma delta prime of b plus um, delta comma delta prime of a dot b. And so uh, this is just a compu simple computation that you can um, do out yourself. Um, uh, it's just expanding this out, and you'll see the left-hand side is indeed equal to the right-hand side. Um, and an important point to be made here is that, um, let's see, uh, if A equals L, if A, if A is a Lie algebra, which I'll denote with uh, L, then we have um, dir L, right, is contained in GL of L. And so GL of L has its own bracket, and L has its own bracket. So what I'll do is I'll denote the bracket in L as this, with a sub L, and then the bracket in GL of L as just a normal bracket. And so with above, what this thing, if you, if you, I mean, it suffices to check that, because this is more general, but just to be familiar with what the notation looks like in the Lie algebra sense, you'd be checking this, A bracket B in L. So this is the bracket in GL of L, right? 
and then um, this is the bracket in L itself, is equal to A bracket delta, comma delta prime B in L, like that plus delta, comma delta prime of A bracket B in L. So there's two different brackets here, and I just want to make that distinction. And so these are, of course, um, this is just a specific case of this. So check this, and of course this will follow, but I just want to write this out. And so those are uh, just derivations, just a simple fact. And very important derivation is called the adjoint of an element. And so the adjoint of an element x in a Lie algebra L is the map add x that sends y, any y in L, to x bracket y. And so the way we can think of this really is you have add x, and then it accepts an argument. And the thing you stuff in as the argument is simply the thing you stuff in here. So it sends y to x bracket y. And so because it's linear in this component, right? The, it's linear in the second component by the bilinear of the bracket, add x is certainly an element of GL of L. Um, it's, it's a linear operator on L. And so what it, what it actually turns out is that add x is an element of dir L, right? And so the, the notion of dir L makes sense because L as a Lie algebra is also an F algebra. We just saw that. And so um, let's see actually why this is a uh, derivation. So this follows immediately from the uh, Jacobi identity. And so the, for the Jacobi identity, we have that for all x, y, and z in L, we have that x bracket y bracket z plus y bracket z bracket x plus z bracket x bracket y is equal to 0. We're going to move the right two terms to the right-hand side, and so this becomes x bracket y bracket z is equal to minus y bracket z bracket x minus z bracket x bracket y. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in the, in the first term, I'm going to use the minus sign, send it to the second term by bilinearity, and, and use um, the fact that z bracket x is equal to minus x bracket z, to rewrite this, this first term as y bracket x bracket z. And then in the second term, I'm just going to apply, to swap the two and write this as um, x bracket y bracket with z. And now, if I define, if I change my notation, I'm not actually redefining anything. If I say that um, a dot b is equal to a bracket b, then what we have on the left-hand side is add x applied to y dot z is equal to y dot add x applied to z plus um, add x applied to y dot z. And so now that it's clear that this is a derivation. And so let's actually look at uh, some real quick examples um, because this is actually a really important thing. And so, first of all, let's consider uh, two examples. So L is equal to the span of one vector. So this is a one-dimensional Lie algebra. What does add x look like? Well, add x, right? So this has just a basis x. So it suffices to check the action. Um, so we'll call this basis. So the basis is equal to x, right? And so add x is it's certainly a linear operator, so it can be represented as a matrix. It in the beta basis is going to equal just the action of add x on your basis vector. Well, of course, add x acting on x is just x bracket x is zero, so it's just zero. So the adjoint representation on a one-dimensional Lie algebra is zero, and in general, the adjoint representation on an abelian Lie algebra is also zero, right? If we had x, if this was a span of like 100 vectors, if the adjoint is always zero no matter what, because what we're saying in your abelian is that when you bracket any two things, you get zero, it, it would follow that any adjoint would be the zero matrix. Another example is SL2C. So we saw SL2F last time. I'm just going to fix 
the, the base field to be um, the complex numbers. So SL2, C. Right? And so recall that this thing has a basis given by E equals 0, 1, 0, 0. Uh, H equals 1, 0, 0, minus 1. And F equals 0, 0, 1, 0. And so we want to determine what the image of add E, add F, and add H are in this basis. Like, um, so add E, right, is going to look like this. It's just going to be uh, add E acting on E, add E acting on H, and then add E acting on F. And so, um, if you recall the identity, the, the commutation relations for this that we saw in the last video, what we had is that E bracket E, right, that's a zero, we know that always, E bracket H is equal to minus H bracket E, so the, the, this thing is equal to E bracket H, which is equal to minus H bracket E, which is equal to minus 2E. So what we get is, um, it's, it's equal to minus 2E, so this should be minus 2E. And so we get a minus 2 here, 0, 0. And then lastly, E bracket F is just H, so you get 0, 1, 0. And similarly, you can do the other things for the other matrices. And so that's what the adjoint looks like as a, as a linear operator on SL2C. Um, and so you can determine the image under the adjoint of any arbitrary vector by writing it as a linear combination of E, H, and F. And say if you wanted the image of add E, you just add it like this. So I hope that elucidates what's going on here. Um, and so now we'll come back. And we'll, we'll look more at this stuff. This is like central to what we're going to study. So um, yeah, so we'll, we'll talk more about it. Um, and so the adjoint representation of a Lie algebra L is the map add, which sends L to dir L. So that sends x to the operator add x. And so we usually denote the image of the adjoint representation as add L. Um, and so this is one of the most important representations we'll study. Uh, there is a distinction to be made here, which is um, a, a point of notation, which is suppose you had some Lie algebra L and you had a subalgebra K and you had x as an element of k. There are, there are two meanings to add x, right? One is it is an element of gl of k, where we just view k as a Lie algebra, and another one is where we view it as an element of l. And so sometimes to um, distinguish the two, you can put a subscript k here and a subscript l here to indicate which one you're viewing it as. And the reason this matters is because, um, uh, for example, if, if x is an element of the diagonal matrices, n comma f, um, then uh, x add x is equal to 0 in, inside here. So add sub d n comma f. But if you view it, this is also contained in the general linear algebra and in general it's not equal to zero so add x is an element of gl of n comma f is not equal to zero um, because the recall the di diagonal matrices are abelian and so that will conclude this video um, we will we will certainly be talking more about the adjoint representation as things develop so thanks for watching